Hey guys, how's it going? Um, recently I've been playing ranked on my alt account because I wanted to get it into diamond to get the end of season rewards, which I did. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, but I actually did it from plat 2. I didn't lose a game. So I was plat 2 here and I won every game all the way to diamond 4. And I've just been on a ridiculous streak with Varus, like... 10 3 11 12 1 9 18 4 9 13 7 10 11 7 11 10 4 6 like in 90s every single game i'm just like really hard performing and i think i owe a lot of it to a like specific build and play style that i've been playing that i i don't think i've seen anyone else do it um i came up with the build while i was playing zaya and then i tried it on varus and i just loved it um and then I also adapted my runes to fit the playstyle. So basically the build is if we take uh here's a game where I like full build. Let's go with this. So the build when it finally loads, um the build is you go for Gale Force as your mythic. Here we go. Yeah, so you go for Gale Force as your mythic, um, you get the Berserker Greaves. Uh, and then you get Blade of the Ruin Kick. And that's your core two items, is your Gale Force and your Blade. Uh, after that, you go for Lord Dominix and then Infinity Edge. You pick up a stopwatch along the way, you know, this, just for, uh, this was for a dragon fight. Um, but yeah, and then the last item is completely situational. Um, as for the skill order, this is one that you'll find really weird. I actually max E. And I take these runes here with uh, Comet. I take Scorch. I know I hate Scorch as much as you do in competitive, but in like this rank where the game is often decided by 14 minutes because it's solo queue. Like, Scorch is really good, actually. Uh, in competitive, I, I would take Gathering Storm instead. Um, but I take Comet, I take Mana Flow Transcendence, and then I take Presence of Mind and Alacrity with the standard stat shards. Uh, so I max E, I max Q second, and then W last. Um, I took W level 2 this game because... I was able to hit their bot lane. It's Kaisa Thresh against Varus Nort. If you're not able to hit their bot lane, then you would take Q level two. Um, so yeah, we'll actually use this game as an example. I want to go in and just sort of review the gameplay so that you guys can see sort of how I play this build and how it looks different to a lot of um, a lot of Varus gameplay. So straight off the bat, the runes. The runes give me the ability to play lane like Lethality Varus and have this... I'm just going to turn the game sound down a little bit, I think, just to make sure it's not too loud. Um, but yeah, just to make sure that I have this really oppressive lane like Lethality Varus does with the E poke, with the Q poke. Um, so these runes make it, you know, really easy to play like that. Uh, but I build the scaling build. So it's kind of that middle ground of like you don't fall off like Lethality Virus does, but you're actually really good in lane like Lethality Virus is. So if we watch the lane, um, as I walk in at level one, I'm going to turn the scoreboard off so that you can see. I always look for the E straight away and I just play extremely aggressive. Um, obviously, I don't play brain dead aggressive like I space the thresh there. Uh, I actually remember this level one. I walk up and get flayed because I think, oh, this guy, there's no way this thresh can just walk into my Nautilus. He does. Nautilus just kind of ignores him. So, I don't know what Nautilus is doing there. So that's a pretty bad trade for me, but it's fine. Uh, I think that's probably, like, the worst start to the lane I've had while playing this build. Uh, most matchup, it seems to win. It's really fucking good with Karma. If you ever get Karma and you're playing Varus, oh my god, you're going to destroy if you play this build. Um, so we saw that the bot lane leashed here, so I'm going to play, like, really, really, really aggressive because my assumption is that Echo is pathing top. Uh, now we've got Elise here, Nautilus wraps around, so I'm just going to play back and uh, not give the game away, and then as soon as they're in position, I move forward. I'm going to go in. We kill Kaiser. We get their summoner spells, all four of them. Fresh trades back onto, uh, onto Nautilus, that's fine. Massive lead for me. So I'm going to slow push this wave, I'm going to crash the next wave, I'm going to recall. And uh, recall timings are really important on ADC in general, but especially... On this build, like, tempo is super important. You need to keep snowball... You need to be pushing a lead. You should be winning pretty much every single matchup. The, I mean, Kate Lux is pretty hard, but Kate Lux is completely broken. I'm uh, missing some CS. But yeah, I want to crash this wave so that I can base, because I want to get my items, keep up the tempo, keep up the pressure. So you can see here I'm 21 CS. Um, into this lane with double assassin Kaiser Thresh, I took Doran's Blade to have a bigger HP pool. 
a lot of the time I'll take longsword triple pot um, into anything where it's like poke v poke, I'll take longsword triple pot. Uh, two longswords on the base is very, very often what I end up getting. Um, we might see later, but if I can, I'll buy a pickaxe when I can. So here my support's roaming, he's coming back to lane actually, so I don't need to worry. Uh, but if he was, I would look to just drag the wave rather than playing aggressive in any way. Um, and basically, you wanna when you're playing ADC in solo queue, you want to play to enable your support. Support's a really broken role. So while he's here with me, I can play really aggressive, but as soon as he wants to roam, like he can roam now if he wants. This is fine. He doesn't want to though, he wants to tog in this group, which is fine. Um, but yeah. Wait for my cooldowns. You can see the cooldown on my E. It's like five seconds away. I'll probably look to step up once uh, my E's back. Okay. It's freezing now. Generally what you can do is um, you can freeze while you poke them. And then once you've got them low, you can start pressuring them and pushing. And then they either have to stay under their tower on low HP and risk getting dove. Or, uh, or base and drop the minion wave. It cancelled my auto there, which kind of sucks. Uh, but they have no summoners. We know they have no summoners, so it should be a pretty easy kill. That's generally what you want to do with this build. You want to stack up your... Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty standard to Varus overall, but especially with this build, you want to stack up your Blight, pop your E, um, stack up Blight again, and pop your WQ. So, again... I'm actually going to stay here because I'm going to try to poke Kaiser. Uh, I don't need to reset yet, and my team's doing dragon. This is the main reason that I want to stay, is that this is going on. So if someone moves, because I've got Pryo in this lane, I can move. But until I need to, I won't. So because this is the cannon wave now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crash this wave. Um, I'm going to crash this wave, and then I'm going to go and finish the dragon, I think, and then base. Because they can't really push back into the cannon wave. Just dodge that hook. I can see him. I have a warden tribush. Uh, but yeah. I want to hit the dragon because it gives a legend stack. So you'll see my attack speed here. 0 0.85. When the dragon dies. It should go 0 0.86. There you go. I got one stack of my uh, legend alacrity. Uh, I actually can't base here because they're hard shoving. If we look at the wave. They're shoving this in. So if I base I will miss this wave. So I wrap around. I walk the safe way back to lane. And uh. And I go to grab this wave. But you play like this very conservative aggressive style. Like, I'm playing aggressive, but I'm not taking risks. I think this is how you want to play ADC. In at least every ELO I've played in, which is up to Master. Um, I, I don't know about Grandmaster Challenger because I've never played in it. Um, so yeah. I'm just freezing here. Nautilus can roam if he wants. A reason that I freeze a lot on ADC is that, yeah, now my support, he can just base and go mid if he wants. He can base and go top. He can do whatever he wants right now. Um, and then it's hard for them to step up. There's also no way that I'm getting dove. I'm full HP. I've got exhaust. I've got flash. Like, I'm super safe to just freeze and, uh, and hard chill. So we'll just be doing this for a bit. Um, so yeah, anyone that plays ADC, I think you might be able to grab some LP with this. Maybe it's a build that will catch on. Maybe I'm just delusional and it's terrible, but it's working really well for me. You can see the damage that comes out from an EQ, and I do that really often. Fresh just goes in. I immediately ult this guy. There's really no need to be scared. Um... A lot of the time I find that with the, when I'm playing this build, I'm so far ahead just through naturally laning, kind of like Misfortune or Caitlyn, where I will just win because I'm so far ahead. Uh, it's got really good wave clear as well, so I can get a super good tempo reset here. Kaisa's going to lose this entire wave, nothing she can do about it. And I'm up 13 CS, I've got a kill and 3 assists, my support's been completely unlocked the entire game, whereas Thresh has been more inclined to help Kaisa in lane and not roam as much. Uh, I think that's really important if you can get that to happen as ADC. So now my Nautilus is roaming again because the wave's coming back into me. Uh, you always want the wave to be in a position where your support can roam. And if it's not, you want to call your support to your lane and uh, and get them to fix it. So right here, this is freezing again. They really want to crash this so it bounces back into them. So that Nautilus has to come back and uh, and help me push, which it does. It does. And now they're unlocked, but that's fine. There's no dragon. Um, I just... Uh, yeah, Nautilus is pinging. 
<coughs> excuse me. Nautilus is pinging Yone to play back. Yone should know this is happening. Okay, now as soon as you see this, as soon as you see this, uh, Nautilus can go and roam. That's fine. What you do not do as AD carry here is go and join this. Watch what I do instead. I'm going to speed it up because, you know, I hard shove the wave and I just hit the tower. And look how much gold I'm getting. What, like, all this is going on up here, it doesn't matter. Look how much gold I'm getting. I'm getting ridiculously fed, honestly. Like, I think there was five plates. I'm pretty sure I get the full turret here. That's a really, really bad roam for them. Now, one thing that you should know, I remember this actually, one thing you should know is that they've now had time to reset and get back onto the map. And I know this. In my head, I remember thinking, they're going to kill me if I take this wave. Uh, I'll be greedy and take the wave. Don't do this. Don't be greedy and take the wave. Just leave. I waste my ult. Like, this is a really bad play. Yeah, I, I do this every now and again. I think a lot of AD carries do this every now and again. Try not to do that. Yeah, you know, that, that's how you lose games. I was incredibly far ahead. Can I actually check the gold? So I'm up over a thousand gold on Kaisa right now. I'm insanely, insanely fed. I'm level eight. Uh, now, normally what I would do is rotate into mid here off of that base, but my team were already clearing mid. So I go and clear bot because I think we're going to play for this dragon. So I want bot wave pushed in. Um, objective timers aren't on, are they? Yeah. Objective timers. Here we go. Yeah, you can see the dragon. Wait, did the dragon already die? Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Um, but I always play for waves. I always, always, always play for waves. And then once I've, once I've taken the wave, I'll look to see if there's a play that I can join in on. So this is, this kind of bridges, it brings us into discussing the mid game. So here in the mid game, I push this wave into their turret and I back off because I have nobody on the map. So there's no way I can step forward. I'll look for Q-Poke. Q-Poke's fine. Look for that. But don't step up when, when you have no one covering you. Don't do that. Here, I'm just going to take the wave. I'm quite cautious about getting ganked, but I have vision here. I should really be playing this pocket of the lane, but it's fine. Again, I delete the wave. They're losing the wave to the turret, and I'm just being extremely patient and waiting for my team to be in position to actually do something off of having permanent mid prior. It looks like I'm AFK. I'm genuinely not. I'm just moving my mouth around the screen and looking. Uh, like I'm using my F keys and stuff. I'm just watching people. Now that my Nautilus is in their bot side jungle, I can look to shove this in and go and do something with him. And Kaisa comes. So you'll see I'll probably go, yeah, I'll wrap around into Bot River here. I'll look to follow up on whatever Nautilus is doing. I'll look for this Thresh. This Herald play is very strange. I don't know why we're dropping Herald here. It makes me want to go forward, though. I think this is a very bad Herald. But I guess it was expiring. Let's space that hook nicely. Okay, here Echo's coming in. I'm just going to Gale Force out of the W to deny him the option of engaging onto me. Fight looks pretty doomed. I'm going to try to stop them chasing Nautilus with my slow, and then I'm just going to get Thresh killed with my ult. Bit more poke. That's it. Don't overcommit. Don't overchase. Play very conservative. Where am I going? Go and get midwave. Go and push midwave. There we go. Play for your waves. Get your gold. Get yourself ahead. Like, look how far ahead of this Kaiser I am right now. I think Kaiser actually ends up getting really fed somehow. Um, in this game. But it's not from me, so, you know. I keep throwing these Qs. How much gold do I have? 1241. So I'm looking to stack up some more gold to get a better recall. Uh, but as you can see, I'm building my Blade of the Ruin King now. On my next base, now that I'm past level 9, I'll swap the Blue Trinket. Blue Trinket's really good on ADC. It lets you check bushes without having to like actually face check them. Um, so that's one thing that's really important. Another thing you'll notice is that I don't buy control wards when I play AD carry. Um, I try to think about where they are and track the jungler's pathing more than like drop down vision. But again, you see, I'm, whenever t people are going for these plays, which I can tell aren't going to work, I'm not committing into them. I'm hanging back, I'm waiting. I'm letting the play happen around me, and then I'm just playing for my waves. And it's probably very frustrating for my team to watch me do this, but if I went in, I would just die. Now, I see them top. This is very similar to the thing that was happening in bot lane. I see them top, so I just take mid tower. 
This is what you want to do. You want to get the wave pushed in so that if they do something like this, you can just take the turret. And now I'll look to base in this jungle. I see this ward, so I don't want to base anymore, so I go a bit further out. I want to make sure that I'm uh, safe to base, because they're going to be resetting or running through mid. Sedge is running through mid, as you can see here. So let's see what I get. Pickaxe, complete my recurve bow, and a longsword. I did get blue trinket. Waiting for a little bit of mana. I think I waited too long for mana there. I don't think you need to wait that long for mana. I should have uh, head back onto the map faster. Nautilus is just straight up in thing. I'm in base. He just shouldn't be going in. It's like right before Dragon as well. He will spawn for Drake though. Uh, but yeah. You're going to get a lot of people into your games. Especially Nautilus supports. Let's close this so that we can see. Yeah, Kaisa's now on a rampage. I don't know how this happened. She's 5, 3, and 7. I think I'm probably still ahead in gold. I am still ahead in gold by nearly a thousand. She's 5, 3, and 7. I'm 1, 1, and 4. And I'm nearly a thousand gold up. So I just throw my Q at them there. I really don't want to commit into this. It's too difficult for me to. I tried to predict the echo dashing on him, but Kiana just kills him with the Q. Sedge is going for me here. Thumbs me up. Thresh wants to hook me. I Gale Force it. See, this is another reason that Gale Force is really going on Varus, as well as the ability to pick people. I've used it twice this game so far already, just to create space and uh, team fight easier. Why am I cancelling my autos? I'm boosted. Anyway, that guy's dead. I, I do a lot of damage. I'm very, very fed this game, even though the scoreboard doesn't tell how fed I am. It says 2, 1, and 5, but I actually have the most gold in the game by a considerable margin. Uh, also, Varus is really good at killing Dragon. You auto oh, 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 e, oh, 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 Q. You Q the wrong way. That's very, very important that you Q the wrong way. No, you don't Q the wrong way. Uh, but your Blight stacks reset the cooldown of your abilities. So you can keep cycling E and Q onto the Drake like that, popping Blight. They're TPing in. I don't know why they're TPing in. I thought it was Sejuani. It wasn't. It was Kiana. I just exhaust her. I kill her. I miss my E. Kaisa kills me. I played that pretty badly. Uh, I walked kind of straight into her thinking it was Sedge. It wasn't. It was Kiana. But it's fine. We win this fight. Uh, so that's another mistake from me. So these very silly mistakes are the only way that I die. Like, you're very, very safe as with this build on Varus. So unless you're making stupid mistakes like I did there, which, you know, my subscribers are all based, so no one's going to be doing that, right? Um, you're probably going to be all right. Right, back onto the map, speed it up. And, for, I mean, we're still in the mid-game, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. I'm going to be getting mid-prio. Here, I'm, you see I'm really wary to step up because I don't have my team with me. Now, Sedge ults me. I Gale Force away from her. I'm too far up here. That's another silly mistake. I nearly kill Kaiser though. I do nearly kill the Kaiser, but again, it's a silly mistake for me, and I just die for free. And I think this is a very, very common death for a lot of AD carries. What I should have done is just sat here. Um, if we go back and watch before I die, I'm dead here as well. I'm just dead everywhere that I go in the VOD. What can I do, man? Okay, yeah. If we look at this wave, uh, not yet. Once Kaisa touches it. Okay, here. This wave, there's no need for me to walk up. It's coming to me. There's, so there's no need for me to walk it. I walk it, I greed. I greed for Pryo, I greed for the wave. Sedge is there, she throws her all. I manage to sidestep it, I gale force a W, but it's not enough to let me 1v2. It very, very nearly is enough to let me 1v2, but it's not. Um, so just don't do that. Don't be there. Don't be like me. Be better than me. And you'll, you'll giga climb. You'll gain so much elo. Also, depending on what rank you're in, a lot of people are not going to know how to respond to this Emacs virus with Comet. Like, you saw how much pressure I was putting on them in lane by just Eing them on cooldown. Uh, a good thing about it as well is that not only do you get more damage on your E, it r massively reduces the cooldown. And a lot of your Q's damage comes from the AD ratio anyway, rather than uh, skill points, like base damage. Okay, we got another fight going on here. Thresh is already dead. Nothing's going to happen here. Uh, oh, yeah, um, Sedge is taking this bot turret, so I'm going to go and defend this turret. Because we've already got mid shoved, I don't need to be mid, so I'm looking around the map, see what else I can do. This bot turret needs defending, Sedge is trying to kill me to get away from Elise. It's never going to work, because I can just ult her under the tower. Nothing she can do. Execute her with WQ. Generally, you want to um, ult them, 
your ult will build up three stacks and you'll probably get some autos in there as well to build the stacks up quicker. You E them to pop the stacks. This will make them very low so that when you do your next three um, stacks, your WQ executes them. You always want to E first because it gets them low for the WQ execute. Basing. I've now got my Blade of the Ruin King. I've got my Last Whisper. I'm very, very strong. They're dropping Herald mid. I'm just going to play very conservatively and defend it. Now, Drake is spawning in two waves. Um, you can think of League as like a 30-second turn-based game. Like, I'm playing it by the wave, right? So that's one wave. The next wave that comes, Drake is going to spawn after that wave. Um, so I want to try and push this wave and then look to fight with my team for the dragon. Let's speed it up a bit so that we get to this wave. Uh, but yeah, you can see how I'm playing, like, what I'm doing in the mid game is very, very simple. And as long as you have the mechanics on Varus to back up the, the fights, if you're playing like this, unless your team are completely griefing, and even if they are to some extent, everyone knows they should be going for Dragon, you're going to be playing these very controlled fights around objectives, these very, very sort of formulaic 5v5s. And also, you're very good at getting picks yourself with Gale Force Ult, or with just Varus Ult in general. Uh, it's quite awkward for me to get in because the fight is moving down here, so I've got to wrap all the way around here. Do not, when this happens, do not run down the river. They will just turn on you and they will kill you. Now that I've got Elise with me, I can go with her into the fight. So let's see how this fight goes. Let's put it on direct to camera. Elise gets a really nice cocoon. I follow it up with WQ. Uh, it hits the Echo. Managed to kill him. And then we just fight front to back. I Gale Force Ult the Kaiser. She flashes it. And now, don't chase. Turn on to dragon. Do the dragon. Uh, yeah, see, it's me. Me pinging the drake. Um, if you if you get into that situation, you want to tell your team, stop chasing. You know? Come and do the objective. Spam ping. I should ping more than once, though. I should, spin, I should ping dragon, like, over and over. Spam pinging unironically works. Now, guess what I'm going to do here, guys? Am I going to reset? Am I going to go buy items? Hell no. I'm going to go get midwave. Always play for waves. You know, 80 carry. You're not like, you're not mid, you're not, you know, you are the scaling role. Get your waves. I'm going to get another wave. Because they just reset or they just reset or respawned so I can get this wave. But uh, always bear in mind, you have to, I missed cannon. Always bear in mind, you have to be careful when you're playing for these waves that you don't overextend for waves like I showed you before. Okay, now I have Lord Doms. Now I'm feeling really, really good. I'm three items. I think this is maybe my biggest power spike in the game. Once you get Lord Doms, because their front line can't go near you with these three items. If Sedge ever goes near me, I will just melt her. So, I think this is probably your biggest spike. Maybe it's the Infinity Edge, but this feels really nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm just playing for waves again. We can look to make a pick and get Baron. Again, I'm just playing for this mid wave. I push mid. And then I'll look to see what my team are doing. I know they're in this bush. We have vision. So I just sit all the way back here. I have no idea what that arc was. Uh, but yeah, look, they have to respond to this, which gives us the opportunity to come into this river and prepare vision around this, uh, this baron. Sorry, not dragon. Uh, but I'm just sitting here because my team aren't doing it. Until my team go, I can't go. Think of, uh, think of AD carry like your team is a tank, right? And you are the gun. You're not the wheels. You don't get... The gun doesn't get to choose where the tank goes. It's the... Well, I suppose tanks don't have wheels, they have tracks. But you know what I mean. It, it's not the gun that decides where they go, but wherever the tank goes, the gun follows. That's kind of like what I'm doing. I push this wave, and then I look to see what my team are doing. If I can see like a, a nice pick with Gale Force Ult, or just Ult, then I can Ult them. But otherwise, I will just do this. We've controlled the vision. They now have no vision. We're going to start up the Nash. Now... I remember this Nash. This is really, really nice timing on the ult by Maokai. He ults them. Uh, they can't get into the pit because of this ult. We're melting the Nash. But I realized that um, they want to they want to try and kill us and take our buffs here. So I just ult them, disengage. But now my team want to engage off of my ult, which is fine. I WQ the Thresh to proc Blight. I look to E him. I'm spacing really, really... Uh, I'm playing really, really far back. I'm letting the fight come to me. I'm never running in as Varus. Now I can melt their Sedge, because she actually ran into me. I exhaust Kaiser. I kill her too. Now, my team want to chase this Kiana. I don't. Save your Baron buffs. Always, always, always save your Baron buff. Don't lose your buffs. Your Baron is huge. It allows you to, like, just siege incredibly well. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, Elise ran in, she died to Kiana. There's just no reason to chase that Kiana there. She should reset. Um, yeah, a lot of the time you'll be tempted to follow what your team are doing, because I guess I have been telling you to follow what your team are doing. But what I mean by that is don't go to places without your team. But if your team are doing something dumb, don't go with them either. I guess the gun does go with the tank, but if the tank's driving off a cliff, the guy in the little gunner hatch jumps out. I don't know. I, I think I just broke my analogy. Um, but yeah, you get what I mean. If your team are being dumb, don't go with them. Why am I basing? I'm basing to sell my D-Blade and buy a stopwatch. Is there a Drake fight coming up? There is a Drake fight coming up. There you go. Where on important fights like a Baron fight or a Dragon fight, Stopwatch is the best 750 gold you can spend in the game as an AD carry. Uh, I'm going to collect Red Buff before the Drake fight. Anytime that you... So like This is like a, one of those times where we're going to have this very scripted, sort of formulaic, controlled fight, right? Kind of like what we just had at Baron. The objective's up, we're going to play for the wave, and then we're going to play for the objective. There's going to be a fight. They're probably not just going to give us soul for free. Uh, so yeah, I'm buying my stopwatch. Pushing the wave. And my team are already fighting in bot. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Okay, they kill Sedge, but our jungler dies. This is very bad for us. Our jungler is dead. Uh, I'm looking to help get my Nautilus out of here, because if if Kaisa over commits, I can look to ult her and kill her. Kiana's chasing us through the jungle. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to look to go back to mid. Kiana goes on me here. I stopwatch her ult. I think I should have Gale forced her ult there. Because now I don't have my stopwatch. But I land my uh, I land my ult onto her. She's invis, but she's dead anyway. Kaisa doesn't want to deal with me. I'm extremely strong. Understandable. Uh, I'm going to start doing the dragon here. The reason I'm going to start doing the dragon is because my team are all dead. And their AD carry and jungler are, are alive. And what I'm expecting is that Echo's going to come here and do the Drake with Kaisa. Right, Kaiser's going to push this wave and they're going to do the Drake. So we're going to lose this Drake anyway. So I figured I may as well flip it and try to Guma Yushi it. You know? I don't think it works out, if I remember correctly. The dragon's spazzing out a bit there. So I take it to like 100 health. Pretty close. If I get it, we get soul. I don't get it, so, you know, they, they get a Drake. Uh, but we were going to lose that Drake anyway. Elisa's only just respawned. I don't think there's any way we were getting it, so... I think it's fine to just try and flip it there. It's a very safe flip. It's not like Echo can kill me. Um, it's just... Can I get the dragon or not? Again, very, very conservative, but... Aggressive. Aggressive, but not risky, is how I think you should play. Yeah, this is why I have a very similar scoreline every single game. I'm always, like... Kills and assists and very few deaths. Uh, I mean, sometimes I have a lot of deaths, everyone has bad games, but the playstyle just leads you to, you know, to having this. Um, so again, I'm pushing in midwave, and then I'm going to sit with this Elise and see if we can get a pick. Yep, that is what I'm doing. Kind of interesting watching myself, because I'm thinking, did I think the same way then as I thought now? I guess I have more information now, because the fog is, uh, I can see them. Um, but yeah, I'm backing all the way off here because my team's down here and I don't know, this is pink quartered, so I don't know if someone's trying to jump over this wall onto me. So I'm backing all the way off. Always play around your vision. I'm trying to stick to the bottom side of the lane as well. This is something that you'll know if you play mid lane. You want to play on the pocket of the lane or the side of the lane that you're... T so my team are on this side, right? So it's really hard for them to come this side and kill me. They have to walk through my team. But they could easily be here and they could run in. So I play on this side of the lane so that if I need to run away, I'm running into my team. Um, we've got Elise again dead that's fine I mean it's terrible but it's fine we'll deal with it just looking to throw some poke again one thing that you'll notice is that because I'm playing for these mid waves here they've just killed our jungler but what can they do they've got to go and respond to this they have no wave to push they still haven't got our mid T1 because every time they do anything Sorry, I'll rewind so that we can watch this fight. But every time they do anything, every time they get anything going, they can't push because they don't have a wave because I'm always playing for the wave. And I'm never taking a fight when the wave's not in a good position. So Yone finds the Thresh here. I throw my ult onto Kiana. I pop with my Blight. I get some uh, auto stacks. And then I would have looked to finish with my WQ, but they were already dead. Um, I just played, you know, you just position well. You auto attack them. You use your abilities. 
not not very complicated fight there. I'm gonna base. Maybe I can afford Infinity Edge. I probably can. Uh, oh yeah, my Elise was pinging me to take tower here. I pinged the Echo was alive. I think. Um, yeah, we just back off. Take a wave. Clear some vision. Go to base. Buy Infinity Edge. Extremely strong. Buy an extra Crit Cloak. Crit Cloak's the best component here over Pickaxe now that you've got Infinity Edge because every crit is more valuable. So having more crit percentage is really good. And now again, the game is now about uh, Baron and then Dragon in two minutes. Uh, so Dragon, well, Dragon's in 140. Dragon's in three waves. Baron is now. Um, so you want to think about the game in like this wave-based playstyle for... AD carry, specifically Varus, because he's very good at clearing the waves. Uh, so now we're running up to Baron. I would ideally like to clear this wave, but it's very risky for me to walk up to this wave on my own right now. Um, because I know they're all around here. So I'm just going to look for some poke. Now my team looks like a fight's going to happen here. Yeah, Echo's going in. So Echo stopwatch is here. I'm going to ult him out of his stopwatch so he can't ult. And then I'm going to WQ him so he's dead. And then I'm just going to stay all the way back. Throw my abilities, get an auto in where I can, but I'm not going to play too aggressive. Um, we're already winning this, so the only way we can lose is if I grief. Once she's CC'd, I walk up and auto her, push the mid wave, and now we go get Baron. And this should be a really free Baron. And we should be able to use this to get a Dragon Soul as well. Uh, I'll speed this up because I don't think anything's going to happen other than taking the Baron. Okay, Kaiser and Yone killed each other there. Now we can push mid. Uh, they've got three dead. So very, very easy to push mid. And again, the wave, exactly where we need it. That's uh, Thresh deciding to kill himself. But yeah, what you'll notice is that like this is, uh, this is low diamond, this game. This is like diamond four average game. It looks like these players are in thing. Because in pretty much every elo you get it up to, even in like D1 Master when I played games, you get people that just make mistakes. And if you're not making mistakes and they are, your score's going to look like this. 7-3-13. Like, I, I think Kaiser's making some of the least mistakes on their team, and she's playing pretty well. You know, Kaiser, she's 14-6-10 with reasonably high CS for a Kaiser into Varus, but it doesn't matter. I'm... Even when they're getting things, I'm stopping them from getting anything meaningful out of it because the waves are always in the correct place. We've got Sol now. Uh, I, I pinged my team to come bot. Often what will happen is um, your team will run down mid even though the inhibitor is already down. I think I pinged and typed for them to come here uh, and push bot. We want to break this tower. This is the next objective. We've still got Baron buff. We want to break this tower, take their inhib. We don't want to... Like, this inhib's already down. There's no reason to go mid. Uh, so if you have a good understanding of macro... Why am I basing? I shouldn't base here? What am I getting? Eh? Oh, I remember why I based. I based to buy QSS. Because I thought at this point, the only way I can lose is if I get clipped by like a, th a Threshook or a Ezreal... Ezreal? Echo W, a Kai... Uh... What the fuck is this champ called? Kiana, a Kiana ult or a Sejal. So I'm preventing that from happening. And now I'll go into bot and push. Uh, but yeah, because I could afford the QSS item... The amount of safety I get from it is probably worth dropping, like falling behind a wave or two in tempo and pushing this. Because we're still going to have our Baron now. Okay, we're looking to siege this tower with our Baron creeps. They're looking for the engage. They engage onto my Elise. I ult the Sedge. I auto her. I stack up my passive. Okay, that was uh, a nice flash. Yeah, so I, 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 I ult her. I stack up my passive. I E her. And then I look to auto her again, and then to build up passive again, and then WQ. So here, stacks on Sedge, E, stacks on Sedge, WQ. Kiana flash ults me, I flash it. Uh, she's chasing me into Narnia. She actually manages to follow my Gale Force with her E there, which is kind of nice, but I just run up here. So here, I see that their red buff is up, so instead of basing, I take their red buff to get the healing passive from it. So now I'm going to heal up. Um, but I think I just played that team fight well enough that we should just win the game now. I land my WQ onto Kaiser. She's very nearly dead. Uh, Sedge and Kaiser are the only ones alive, so we're just pushing into their base. And I think we should be ending the game here. Inhibitor down. They have no inhibs left. At this point, very, very hard to lose. Uh, I mean, Sedge, I'm, I'm melting her. She's just dead. Uh, I don't think I realized Kaiser had GA here. 
I thought if I trade kills with her, we just win. Uh, but she had GA, and then I was scared, but then they kill her anyway. And yeah, we win the game. So um, that's the Varus build and playstyle that I have been playing on my alt account. I think it's really good. Uh, I have pretty high MMR now. Uh, I gained, I won a game and I gained plus 24 in Diamond 4. So yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty fun, and I just wanted to share the build, get some takes on it, and uh, show how I played it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's a bit of a different video from me. I'm not going to do many of these videos. It's not something that I uh, intend to make a mainstay on my channel, unless people particularly enjoy it, uh, and I show off like different itemizations and playstyles of champions. But if you're still here, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have success with this build if you try it in ranked. Uh, good luck, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.